Hello and welcome to the Open Heat Transfer course conduction. This course is brought to you by RWTH Aachen University and the University of Twente. My name is Wilco Rose and in this video we will look at the heat conduction in the cylindrical coordinate system. Let's start with a little overview. First, we will look at the steady state one dimensional heat conduction in a pipe wall. We will look schematically how the temperature profile looks like because of the changing cross section and the constant heat flow. Then we will derive the differential equation via energy balances for the temperature profile. With the mathematical solution of the differential equation, we finally obtain the temperature profile. Later on, we will expand the one-dimensional heat conduction in a single layer to multi-layer pipe walls. And finally, we will look at the special case for very thin walls, where the wall thickness is much smaller than the radius of the wall. This will lead to a simplification of the problem, like a nice engineering approach of a complex solution. Now, let's look at the differential equation and the heat transfer in a pipe wall. What you can see here on the left is a pipe wall, now consisting of a homogeneous material, and the gray part here will um, show the differential element that we use for our balance in a few moments. In this pipe, we can also apply Fourier's law from the inner radius to the outer radius. So from Fourier's law, we know in general, it looks like that the heat flux is equal to the negative of the driving potential dt dr times the thermal conductivity and the area. In this special case, of course, the area changes with the radius, it increases. So the resulting temperature gradient here, dt dr, will not be constant as has been shown for the plane wall because although the heat transfer QR is constant through the wall, the area increases and as such the temperature dt dr needs to decrease. And as the temperature gradient decreases gradually with the increasing radius, we can directly draw a first guess of the temperature profile. So here we have the temperature between T1, which is uh, assumed to be the inner temperature, and T2, which is assumed to be the outer temperature. We know from the plane wall that this will be a straight line, but due to the increasing area, the temperature gradient, dt dr, decreases gradually with the increasing radius. And as such, we have this concave shape of the temperature profile. Now, for the derivation of the energy equation, we have to consider the heat flux QR entering here our control volume and the heat flux QR plus dr, which leaves the control volume here shown in the gray um, shaded area. So the energy balance looks like this. We have zero on the left side because we assume again steady state. And this is equal to the um, heat going into the control volume, Q at the location R, minus the heat going out of the control volume, Q R plus dr. Now let's look um, a little bit on uh, profiles. So we start with a very simple part, the area. How does the area behave? So we know from the plane wall that's now shown always in black that the area is constant. But in case of a pipe wall, the area increases with the radius. The heat flux is in both cases, irrespectively if it is a plane wall or if it is a pipe wall, constant across the area. And as such, the temperature profile, which we know from the plane wall is a constant line, will change for the, um, in the cylindrical coordinate system for the pipe wall to become now a concave shaped curve. So this is for a constant area. And if the area increases, the, heat, um, the driving potential gradually decreases. 
Now we uh, can, in one ca uh, one way, apply Fourier's law. We know that in in um, contrast to the constant um, area case, we have now to consider a as de a dependent variable on r. And so the local temperature gradient here, rearranging the equation, is just qr divided by lambda times the area of r. And for the area, we can now use the area of an um, a cylinder and the area of a cylinder is 2 pi times the length of the cylinder times the radius. Uh, we separate this, we have on the left side the red part is a constant and the right part here is the differential element dr divided by the radius. How can we now calculate the temperature profile? So the one possibility is to integrate Fourier's law from T0 to TR, but this approach is um, a little bit more complicated, a little bit more mathematical complex, and as such, we will omit this and we use another approach. And in this approach, we use the um, energy balance around an infinitesimal element. So we already explained, we have the ingoing heat flux Q in, and the ingoing heat flux, we can utilize Fourier's law for that. So um, expressing the area again with the uh, uh, surface area of the cylinder. And we can now also use um, the Taylor series expansion, which we had in the previous videos. So the outgoing heat flux is equal to the ingoing heat flux plus the change of the ingoing heat flux in the infinitism area or length um, delta r. The energy balance was zero is equal to Q in minus Q out and adding or subtracting Q in and Q out, we are left with zero is equal to the negative of the change of the heat flux Q in over the area dr. So we see again, there is no change of the heat flux. We have said that the heat flux is a constant through the entire plane wall. Now we enter Fourier's law in uh, this equation. So we express Q in by Fourier's law and rearrange this a little bit. So we have the constant values. And on the right side here, we have the differential of R dt dr. So it's the second differential of the temperature, but of course, still multiplied by the radius r. Now we will treat um, this integrand and we want to integrate this to finally obtain the temperature t as a function of r. There is now one important part that you have to consider because um, it can be simply made uh, wrong. So there is a chance, of course, to uh, use the separation of variables to then write dr, dr plus, and so on. This is not the right way. Please don't do that. Please directly integrate here this equation. And we can do that because we know that this equation is equal to zero. And if we integrate that, we will come up with r dt dr is equal to a constant. And we call this constant c1. Now we can do a second integration before we can uh, put the r on the other side. So there is c1 divided by r and integrating that, we know that there will be a, a logarithm. So the temperature t of r is equal to the constant c1 that we had before times the logarithm of the radius r plus c2. This is now the equation for the temperature profile. But what we still need is a function or is an expression for the two constants C1 and C2. So now let's go to the boundary conditions for our problem here. We know that the temperature at the radius R1 is the temperature T1, and we know that the temperature, uh, the temperature at the radius R2 is the temperature T2. We utilize these two temperatures and we obtain now explicit expressions for temperature one and temperature two depending on the radius, the logarithm of the radius, and the constants C1 and C2. Now we have two equations for the two unknowns C1 and C2. 
So first we subtract both equations from each other. And in this way, we can get rid of the constant C2. We are left only with the constant C1. Now, in order to get the constant C1, we can rearrange this equation here. And you know from the laws of logarithm, so ln r1 minus ln r2 is ln r1 divided by r2. And we can also switch this one here. So from r1 divided by r2, we can write r2 divided by r1. This is then the negative of it. And to get the negative here, we also just change here the order of the temperatures. So instead of T1 minus T2, we write T2 minus T1. These are just applying a few laws for logarithms. Now we can have we have an explicit expression for C1, which we can now place and um, in our equation here for T1. And utilizing this here, we get also an explicit expression for C2. Now we know C1 and C2. We can use both uh, with these two integration constants and place them into the temperature profile T of R is equals to C1 times ln R plus C2. We do that. Now we have an equation, an explicit equation for the temperature TR, which we need now to rearrange a little bit. So what do we do with rearranging? So we have this prefactor. This is uh, in both cases. So we can write this um, in one sense. And here we have ln r plus the here the negative of ln r1. Uh, so minus ln r1. And we can uh, combine those two logarithms to ln r divided by um, r1. So in this sense, we have now obtained the temperature profile and this con cave shape is expressed by the logarithm. This is now the final equation for the temperature as a function of the radius. Now, we have the temperature, but often it is not necessary to calculate the heat flux. In order to get the heat flux or the heat flow, we utilize again Fourier's law. Q is equal to the air minus the area times the um, first derivative of the temperature profile. We know the temperature as a function of R, so we have to take the first derivative of this equation. And the solution is now for the first derivative here, we get rid of this ln R divided by R1, and we are left with here um, T2 minus T1 divided by this logarithm of R2 divided by R1 times 1 over R. And in this sense, we know then the heat flux Q is equal to the potential divided by a resistance. And we can then, because we see that this here is a resistance, expand the single layer wall to a multi-layer pipe wall just by using the same approach, adding a few resistances. And this I will show you in the next part of this slide here. So coming from the single layer pipe wall to a multi-layer pipe wall, we make an addition of the resistances, which are here in series, of the single resistances from 1 to n. And this is now because the prefactor 1 over 2 pi l is constant. We have then the sum of 1 over the conductivity of each of the compo uh, compartments times the logarithm of r i plus 1. So it's uh, um, the layer i plus 1, the, um, the radius here on this part here, like for instance for the first um, um, compartment, divided by the radius i. And in this sense here, we can have a total resistance. And with a total resistance, we can, of course, then calculate the heat flux for a multi-layer pipe flow. So you see here, qr is equal to the temperature difference from the inner side to the outer side divided by the total resistance. Now we would look at the final part in this presentation, and that is what happens if the pipe thickness becomes very thin, so pipe wall. So we have here 
um, a large radius R1 and R2, but a very thin um, uh, thickness of the wall. Now, from the mathematical perspective, we can, of course, write R2 as being R1 plus delta. And from this logarithm part here, we then um, have the logarithm of 1 plus delta divided by R1. Applying now a few laws for logarithm, we know that the 1 plus delta divided by R1 can also be um, expressed in this a uh, very common equation ln of 1 plus x. And we know x is very small. So for the case that x is very small, the expression ln 1 plus x is approximately um, x itself. And so knowing this from a mathematical point of view and entering this in our equation, we come up to a very simplified um, idea and that idea resides in the case that the heat flux of the, mild, of the pipe wall with the very thin uh, pipe thickness is the identical one to the plane wall equation. So it's area times the thermal conductivity times the temperature gradient. So the temperature difference between inner and outside divided by the, plane, uh, the pipe th wall thickness. This is already the um, final slide of the video. We, are, uh, we have discussed uh, how is the temperature profile in cylindrical bodies. And we have seen that due to the change of the area, the increasing area with the radius, there is a um, concave shape of the temperature profile. Second question, how does the temperature profile of a cylindrical body differ from the temperature profile in the plane wall? Of course, that is the, the shape that the um, temperature profile in a plane wall is a linear part. The temperature profile in a cylindrical body is this concave shape um, uh, profile. The reason for that is simply that the area increases while the heat flux is maintained to be constant. And as such, to uh, Fourier's law will tell us directly that there is a change in the um, curvature of the um, um, or in the slope of the um, temperature profile. Final question, under which conditions can the curvature of the cylinder and thus the change of the area inside the cylinder wall be neglected? This is of course the case if we have a very large radius and a thin, comparable there, a thin uh, pipe wall. And in this case, in the change in the area um, is to be can can be neglected and as such the profile is almost linear. We have seen this in a nice der mathematical derivation with the ln of one plus x. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.